Changing your strings shouldn't be a hassle. The Pro Winder is a single tool that performs the jobs of three. It winds, cuts, and pulls out stubborn bridge pins. What's up, YouTube? This is Perry with Premier Guitar here in Nashville, Tennessee at the end, hanging out with the dudes in Knock Loose today. I'm very excited. This is Isaac Hale. Um, they're out on the road right now in, tour of, in support of your new album. Yeah, new record. Different Shade of Blue, record, yeah. which rips if you haven't heard it. Um, Thank you. Appreciate man, I'm so glad. I, every, everybody over at uh, Pure Noise, thanks for letting us do this and setting this up. This Absolutely. rules. I've been really, really excited about your band for a long time, and I yeah. probably owe you guys all a little debt of gratitude for kind of reigniting my passion for hardcore. Oh, so thank you. Appreciate that. I appreciate that. that. Appreciate oh, that. Yeah. Let's start with this seven string Absolutely. bastard right yeah. here. What do we got? Uh, this is an Ibanez RGD. Uh, there's a bunch of numbers that come after the RGD. Dude. I think it's an MX some shit. Yeah. Uh, not sure. I, I, I never nail down the numbers. Uh, but Dude, they're impossible. Yeah, they're impossible. Uh, it's. Pretty standard. Um, we got one, just one volume knob on this guy. That's it. I had them remove the other dude. Cool. Um, are you ever going to the neck? Dude, very rarely. Right. I do for some lead stuff. For lead stuff, These yeah. are both uh, DiMarzio Fusion Edge pickups. Um, not something that you typically, uh, usually it's like a, a bare knuckle or an EMG. Right, right. But I actually hate active pickups. Really, why is that? Um, I just think that the, the EMGs, it's not that, it's not, I think that they have their time and place for everything, sure. um, but I, I, there's a sizzle to them that is kind of hard to control on a gain standpoint that sure. I think, and I like, I like having a really like nice warm tone. I don't have a problem with boosting, um, boosting my gain with a pedal or on the amp and turning yeah. it up, cranking it super loud if it makes up for that pickup. I get so that. These Sometimes the MGs can be a little uh, uh, light in the mid-range too. Exactly, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think that, uh, I think that the we crank our mids super high, so having these warm, these a bit warmer, right. it kind of makes our sound a bit warmer. It makes it makes it a bit more full. Uh, you know, ash body, maple yeah. neck. I love the um, wood. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's so beautiful. Cool. I've beaten the shit out of this. Surely, yeah. <laughs> I really have, um, but it's done me so well. Um, yeah. Got just like standard like stock fucking locking, locking tuners. tuners. Got to have that for yeah. nothing stuff, crazy for sure. about this guy, but. It's done me so well. I love playing Ibanez guitars. They're, they, they're so fast. Yeah, um, the neck is usually really, really nice. Yeah, the neck's really, really nice. The new record has a shit ton more riffage on it. It's got a lot more death metal in it. It's got a lot of more moving up and moving down up the fretboard. Mm -hmm. So this cutaway allows for me to get all the way up here. We're playing dissonant chords Squeals, and shit all yeah. the way up here. Squeals and Dude, shit. this fretboard is sick, too. Exactly, it's awesome. The burled. It's, it's really, really cool. Yeah. The way that this kind of works its way in, this little cutaway works its way in. Yeah, neck. It's really and that nice. gives you plenty of neck access. Exactly, yeah. yeah. I mean, I can hit this guy, all, like, that's two octaves, like, easy. Yeah, it's not, it, it, it doesn't even take anything for me to hit it, so. Yeah, I love this guitar. It's done me well. Um, and yeah, I, big ups to Ibanez for hooking us up. Yeah, man. Shit, man. I saw I the, the, the new line at NAM was beautiful, yeah, man. They're doing some amazing. really wacky, yeah. cool colors. Yeah, and exactly. Stuff, yeah. I've, 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 nothing specific, but I've been working on some cool ass shit for an, another guitar. Um, I love the RGAs and the mm -hmm. RGDs. Um, I think they're super fast. They're super cool. They're super. It's the my first guitars. Like back in the day, my first sure. extended range guitars were. Ibanez. Ibanez. I mean, like, yeah. corn was like they were like first. one of the first to really kind of exactly. Start to seven so and eight whenever and I think of sevens, which what is what we have played for a while, I just think I automatically think Ibanez. So being able to work with them and so play these. Are speaking of sevens, is it a tension thing for you, or is it? Are you it, just really used to playing it's sevens? A, it's it's I've played sevens ever since I was a kid. Okay. Knock loose in the beginning went back and forth between six and sevens because we yeah. used to play in drop A. Um, we played. We now play in drop G, or but not drop G anymore. We play in standard A now, so okay. we play in a standard tuning now. 
Oh wow, okay, cool. So it's it's cool being able to to play that low, have that extra string, which is never a big deal to us. We always I was just kinda adapted to it. I, I some people pick up a seven string and are like, what the fuck? How do I do, How this? do this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for me, it was never really a big really deal. Cheap. Like, as a dude that has like small hands even, like it's pretty easy for yeah. me to wrap. And the neck is so, the exactly. It's is not, it's, yeah, it's not, yeah. it's like flat profile, not super thick, like right. super easy. Well, I always um, think seven's a good balance because, you know, you see a lot of dudes like Tosin Abasi playing like eight and more, but man, the, the, the fretboard just looks like an ironing board. Exactly, like, it's just, man. Seems exactly. like, a, for me as a sloppy player, I it's feel a, like it leaves a, a lot of room for mistakes. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and like Knock Loose is a hardcore band. So right. it's like, we're not playing with that level of, you know, technicality as something, you know, like Tosin Abasi, for example, right. monster player. Super clean. You know, exactly, super yeah, yeah. clean everything, but like, there's a little slop, there's a little dirt in yeah. what Knock Loose does. Like, I mean, I'm not a perfect player by any means. I'm throwing my shit around, yeah. so like. No, it's about I'm the like, live show. Yeah, exactly, as as I'm, beating the the fuck, sure. I'm beating the fuck out of this thing, so like, there's some slop there, there's some, you know, there's some shittiness there, but like, it's all part of the character. Love and I it. think that this guitar really, really has become, and Cole's too, as mm. have really, really become kind of a part of the show too. Totally. And, they, and a part of the look and everything, so. Sure. Yeah, love this thing. Big Great, and too. you have a, you're currently touring with a backup, but it's pretty much identical, right? Yes. Same yeah. pickups yeah. and everything? Literally, cool. literally gotcha. same shit. All right, let's talk about one of my all time favorite things in the world to talk about, the yes. 5150. Yeah, God, amazing. I love this head. Amazing. Dude, I mean, every iteration of it that I've I've had, and I've had block letter, you know, when I was a kid. Exactly. It just always does so the thing. So the block letter is my favorite still. Yes. The, the original, the OG block yeah. letter. I think it's just, I think it's pretty much like, make sure this guy's off. Make it, I think it's pretty much like God tier tone. Right. right? It's like God tier. For this kind of music, yeah. it is. God tier, like God tier tone. Yeah. Like it's it just something about like the resonance of that sure. head. It's so fat It's sounding. great. The it's presence cool. knob is such a wonderful thing to have. It's you know? wonderful, man. Yeah. And like, dude, so many huge records, like going into studios, right. so many huge records, you have crazy amps. You got like Uber shawls and Diesel diesels and, and, and Mesa yeah, Mark Fives. Yeah. And so many Every time, times. the 5150 for me. 5150 yeah. is the one that's used, I agree, right? I agree. And the dudes at the studios are like, I just, I, I don't get I it. I don't yeah. get it, man. It's, it's funny to me, too, because like a lot of manufacturers, you know, yeah. when doing the high gain thing, like, shit, there, there are some great high gain. Like the Ubershaw, Wagner makes great high gain Incredible. stuff. Incredible. But for the price point, you can find a used 5150 for like exactly. 500 bucks. Dude, and we, we yeah, we, yeah. We pl I played the block letter for a long time. Me and Cole used to both play the, I have two of them, the 50 watt, 5150 yeah, yeah. Love those amps. For those what, for the price and for what they do, I think those are perfect amps. Yes, I, I really, prefer. really do. Yeah. Um, you know, this amp is pretty self-explanatory. It's not everyone knows it's about great. it. It's easy much. to dial in a great. Easy to that. dial yeah. in. It's very, very simple. The 5153, a bunch of people use it. I moved up to the 100 watt guy, right? Uh, because our guitar player, other guitar player, Cole, recently he plays a triple rec now, right? And I wanted more power to match his power, so totally. I moved up to the 100. No, and in a situation like, all right, so you guys exactly, we, you know, they played an in store yesterday, which I don't know if you guys know about this yet, but uh, Premier Guitar has kind of like a, a little uh, like a partnership with Grimey's, which is an independent record store. And if you're ever in Nashville, you definitely should go check it out because it's awesome. But uh, they played there yesterday, and it was like, uh, I was talking to Doyle, uh, the guy that runs the show over yeah. there, and he said it was the first stage dive, first head walk, exactly. first mosh pit. Exactly. Like, this is so exactly. cool. But yeah, wow. in a situation like that where you're only miking vocals, you, you kind of need 100 watts. You need to crank it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, and I already had this guy. Mm -hmm. I used it for my other hardcore band that I played for because I knew because we were playing smaller shows. Sure, so, sure. You know, you're playing mic'd up. That 50 watt is more, is can... It I think that that 50 watt sounds insane. I love, I love it. Lower wattage able, amps are cool, man. I love being able to crank that shit like right up to the headroom, yeah. you know, to, to the point where so you're like... tube start. Yeah, rolling. you're yeah, just man. fucking going insane, man. That's my shit. Um, I just like being able to crank shit. And yeah. I like having loud stage volume more than anything. It's yeah. a very rough thing for sound guys to deal with, but for, for me, sure. not a huge part about Knocked Loose is having a loud feeling stage it. sound. Totally. Like feeling yeah. it, like that's the whole point. Yeah. You know, like tonight, like there's not gonna be that much shit coming through these. Like we're just gonna be, right. it's gonna be like playing a show, vocals through the PA, and then so there you fun. go. Just like classic. God, I love that. But yeah, this amp's fucking awesome. Everyone knows it's awesome. Right. Um, and yeah, I love it. And I, then Mesa cab for a 5150, pretty standard. Those things yeah, sound monstrous. Yeah, exactly, sound, sound Do you know insane. what speakers are in there? Uh, I think these are just the standard um, 
like a, you know. Vintage 30s yeah, or something like 30s, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah which 30s. always sound great. Santa's yeah. vintage 30s, classic. Totally. Uh, I love the, the straight. I love the straight. Straight cabs. Versus the slanted. Yeah. Um, these cabs, uh, they sent us, Mesa sent these to us. Uh, and Did they already have the to the, the, the image no, on? No, we had to put them on. We it's had to slick. put it on. Yeah. We had to take the whole shit off. Dude, yeah. we had to. To take the back off, put it through the back. Oh wow! Like whole straight thing. It was a pain in the ass. Still but cool. it looks rad. But it does look cool. Yeah. It looks pretty cool. Um, these cabs, uh, these newer, uh, they started making their straight cabs a bit smaller and yeah, their base cabs smaller. Have pretty oversized cabs. Pretty oversized I have one cabs. and it sucks to move. Yeah. These new smaller ones are so fucking tight. Yeah, <laughs> they're and they got so wheels cool. on them. I love exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. They're smaller. They're lighter, and they sound just as huge while being smaller. The base cab is fucking it's tiny but it's still in, insanely loud so yeah. yeah very standard v30s hey it does the damn thing man yeah, i love it course. all right so on to pedal world i love that you have some modulation effects this is pretty great absolutely yeah. um i'm gonna guess right out of the gate the freeze is that for like counting worms like the the beginning of that actually the freeze is only meant for one reason the freeze is meant for tuning when we need to still make noise. I see. So we for use like the freeze for one songs. thing. Yeah. So Brilliant. when we're ringing out and shit and we need to tune, or if someone is playing, they feel like they're out of tune, you just, fucking just click yeah. it, tune real quick, come back. Sure. That's literally the only thing it's for. I use it a couple times during the set, I'll freeze and a noise just to have it sound a fucking cool. Pick scrape or something. Yeah, yeah pick yeah. scrape just to have it sound cool. It's a sick little pedal. I, love I use it yeah, at it's home. one of my favorites. Yeah. I use it at home for more shit. Like, I'll solo over it or I'll like yeah. hold fucking, do crazy so shit Sustain pedals it. like that are just so cool. Yeah, man. they're so yeah. tight. But I, for for this purpose, we all have one. It's, it's for making the transitions more smooth. We Brilliant. use yeah. two different tunings because the old record is in drop G, new records in standard A. We have to we have to tune uh, that top was that, up. Was that, oh, Putney's decision or? That was us. It was, that was us. okay. We all played in standard. Like me and Cole, who write a bunch of the riffs, played in standard in all of our other musical endeavors, and we were like, "Why not go back?" Yeah, yeah, it's like, why not just do that and not? Be, and we love the way standard tunings feel. There's different chords that the we tension love using. Is Tension's there. Feeling. Yeah, yeah, totally. It sounds a bit clearer. So, yeah, we use that. You know, when we need to tune that top string up for a song, you know, to go back and forth. So makes sense. That's pretty much what this guy's for. Yeah. And then we got a chorus, yeah. digital delay. Yeah, easy. Classic boss, boss pedals, you know boss how they work. Boss chorus pedals, yeah. Uh, yeah. Easy. You can get them anywhere if they break. Yeah. Exactly. Easy, you know, reliable. These have never broken me. They've lasted me literally for like seven years now. Rules. I think. Uh, insane. Yeah. And I just. Yeah, I, I have boss pedals from when I was a kid still. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I usually like play, I play a good amount of leads in Nakhlu songs and I'll literally just boom. Do double smash? Yeah, 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 I literally just boom, boom. Chorus delay? Yeah, that's literally all I do, is I'll just Give click that it. Zach Wild vibe. Yeah, exactly, yeah, totally. exactly. Huge fan of chorus on everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like a... It thickens it up, man. Dude, I, it, I just think it sounds so fucking cool. Like, I, there's a bunch of parts on the new record, like kind of melodic parts that have chorus on it. Love it. And I love that shit. So what's, this, so what's cool. this max on here? This max on uh, ST9 Pro Plus, uh, Cole showed this to me. Um, he was like, hey, Cannibal uses this. He was like, and he Cole's a huge death metal guy. He's sure. like, yo, Cannibal uses this. I used to use the Mesa Grid Slammer, which yeah. is kind of like their answer to a TN TS9, kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he showed me this. He was like, hey, yo, this, this is what Cannibal uses on their shit. Makes it sound super fat. Cannibal Corpse's new guitar tone with their drop tune guitars is like some of my favorite. Yeah, it's cool. Tone. It's, it's really cool. Yeah. Um, and at first I thought it was like, oh, it's just some death metal, like bullshit. Like, you know, but then I tried it and it's fucked up, dude. I mean, like. Can we hear it? Absolutely. Yeah. We can. We can hear it. Do you want me to turn down at all? No. Um, no. We'll do, we'll I, I do, think we'll, we're okay. Yeah, we, we, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do that. Hold on. I want to hear the double smash, too. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we got, like, without it. Pretty hot without pretty it. Pretty hot. <laughs> but with it. Nasty. Yeah, disgusting. Nasty. Uh, disgusting. Plus, probably gives you a little more sustain too. Exactly. Right? Yeah, 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 it's crazy. Let's do uh, a double stomp. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. 
just loud. It's so reminiscent of like my favorite. Um, you, you know, when I was a kid growing up listening to hardcore, you know, I'm old. So it was like One King Down and bands like that yeah, that totally exactly. did that thing. It, exactly. It sounds rad. It's, that's exactly yeah. what we're trying to do. I love it. Yeah, we're just mixing that cool. shit. Didn't expect a sw swollen pickle on your board. My favorite pedal in the world. Really? My favorite pedal okay. in the world ever. He uses one too. Uh, found it at the studio last time, or last, the first time we went, Will Putney's studio. And he was like, hey, this, this is a god tier pedal. We use it all the time. It just makes things sound stupid. Is it always like an always on kind of pedal? No. We okay. hit these on our slams and it's like slower, basically uh, heavy parts that sustain. Right. Um, Heavy parts that sustain longer, will both click them all at the same time. Me and Cole both click them at the same time, huh. and just take it from here to just. Ooh, I got, all right, I gotta play. Disgusting. I gotta get one of those and yeah. check it out. For it's sure. like you know, you're playing already insane, but uh -huh. then you click it. And I usually end up clicking the chorus to make it even fatter, so it goes to. Just stupid. Super fat. It though. sounds Jeez. stupid. Yeah, it sounds ridiculous. Um, um, ISP decimator is kind of essential for something like yeah, this, right? Yeah, I run yep. shit through my effects loop, so I have these guys, these modulation pedals going through the effects loop. Cool. Um, runs into here, and then these guys going through the front of the head, runs into here. All this ends up back here. Cool. Uh, goes through this, sure. Uh, wireless, wireless system. sure. And then that's pretty much it, man. Cool. Yeah. Wait, loop station. We didn't talk about that. Loop station. That's for uh, literally interludes between, gotcha. between yeah, the yeah. tracks. We don't do any crazy, like, Shit. It's not like you're and, minus the bear yeah, over here. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, We're yeah. not doing any like crazy like guitar shit. I'd like to fuck with that eventually. Yeah, like totally. it'd, be, it'd be sick. But for right now, these are playing like we have we have our songs in blocks. We play sounds in between just to like of course. air out the yeah, room, yeah, yeah. have there always be like, you know, Give you have it sound a little intense and on the new record there's a lot of like little sound clips in there. There's a bunch of shit like that. So we wanted a way to fucking kinda make the live show cooler. So yeah. we run those too. But yeah, the um, whole thing's pretty standard. There's nothing pretty Spartan considering. Yeah, yeah but pretty, great. Not, not pretty, nothing like fucking crazy going on. But um, yeah, just standard chorus delay freeze and then stupid pedal and then stupider pedal. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Basically. Uh, Love yeah. It. The goal is to just sound ridiculous. And, right. And have I think it, you guys are pulling that off. <laughs> have as much, as much, you know, crazy tone going from one guy. So when we're yeah. all playing at once, it just sounds fucking. Massive. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, damn, I think it was a pleasure talking to you. Of course, man. Very excited for the show tonight. Thank we're you. We're going to talk to Cole and the rest of the guys and uh, of course, get man. out of here. Thank you so much. Cool. Now we're on the other side of the stage with Mr. Cole Crutchfield. Cole, uh, thanks for doing this, man. Yeah, really, really, really appreciate yeah, it. Um, a Mesa and a 5150 is one of my favorite mm -hmm. of all combinations of hardcore bands because, yeah. like, the Mesa has kind of a, a I don't know, it's a rectified fired tone, you know, it's right. just different. So is that something that you intentionally did or is this just a head that you yeah. really well, always I've been, liked? I've been playing the EVH 5150 50 watt for a while. Yeah, those are great. And I just want to switch it up because on, on record, like we for like rhythm tones, we blend like a PB5150 and like a Mesa. Sure. So I just want to like get that tone, like have like the blended sound, I guess. And I, I just love Chopper X and I found one for pretty cheap. Yeah. And Lil' little Sus grabbed it, yeah. And I love it. It's my, my first tour playing with it. Oh, really? It's great, yeah. Was there any kind of adjustment? Did you have to like uh, change your pedal setup at all? for it? Oh, uh, not really, no. Cool. I, just, I just started using this Mesa pedal again, though. Oh, the grid slammer? Yeah, yeah, it sounds yeah, great. This is it. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. All right. All right, we're working yeah. backwards here. Uh, let, let's talk, uh, Ivan, as you guys, yeah. you, this obviously is brand new. Yeah, yeah, I, I, just, it's, got, I just got this. What a cool um, burst. On our uh, last headliner, but yeah, it's, it's uh, I got to pick out like the colorway and stuff, but yeah, Ivan has like hooked it up. It's a Wolf. prestige, it's like the new RG. Yeah. But yeah, I love they're it. Great. Do you know what pickups are, are they stock? Yeah, these are, uh, they're, they're stock, they're bare knuckle brute forces. Which are great. They're great, yeah, yeah they, sound, they sound really good. Wow, I love this guitar, man. Yeah. I, I haven't been playing it on too many shows in this tour because we've been playing like super small venues and I don't yeah. want it Ooh, to go. I love like, the binding on the neck, that's tight. Yeah, dude, it's, it's awesome, Very I love sweet. it. It's like Ooh, a gloss reverse finish. headstock action. Yeah, dude, sick. I've been playing this guitar on this tour, though. I've been, also a beauty. I got, I got this like a couple years ago, but this is the Iron Label. It's like the RGA. Oh, I this love guitar the is just great. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, I play these in like on like smaller rooms and stuff, and it gets like super sweaty. It's just like <laughs> yeah. the natural finish. You can't really ruin this. Are these also bare knuckles? I'm guessing. These are bare knuckle aftermaths, and cool. these are yeah, also the aftermaths stock. are great. Yeah, yeah th these these are definitely like more higher gain though. So like whenever I play this guitar, I have to like adjust the settings of my amp a little bit. But yeah, these pickups are 
like me and they sound great. Yeah. Yeah, I love this guitar. It's like one of the most solid guitars Super I've ever owned. Like, oh, like, neck yeah, is yeah, sick. Played this yeah. like all of Warped Tour, like outside. You can actually like tell, because this used to be white when I got it, now it's all like the yellow from playing yellow. it outside that's so every cool, day though. on Warped Tour. But yeah, it actually complements yeah. the color of the wood anyway. Right, so yeah, it rules. It. It's great. I love this guitar. Well, heck yeah, you're also running through a Mesa cab. I am, yeah. Um, Stock speakers, I'm guessing you haven't changed yeah. that out or anything. Yeah, it's like brand new Mesa cabs. They, they hooked it up. Cool. Yeah, put the new grills in them for the record. I know. Yeah, yeah. I, I, we, yeah I was just talking to Isaac about how sweet that looks. He yeah. said it was a huge pain in the ass to oh, take yeah, everything out. Oh, yeah, it was a whole process. You had to like open like the back and staple them on and all. It, it, it was like a whole day, but I mean, it was worth it. Yeah, it, it totally looks great, great yeah. man. Yeah. We, we, we usually run like a, two cabs on each side and like two 8x10s, but obviously in rooms like this, you can't set you up. You can't even set them up. You can up. barely yeah, yeah. even set that up in here. But, yeah, you'd kill people if you did that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, a pretty small exactly, room. Yeah. They didn't have wheels, I'd just stack them. Yeah, yeah, that'd, yeah. Be, that'd be ridiculous. Cool, let's dive into Pedal World. Um, cool, yeah. I see a couple of repeats from Isaacs. I yeah. mean, the freeze pedal's great. Gotta yeah, have a decimator. Yeah, yeah, decimator's awesome. Um, like, we both use a swollen pickle. That's for like yeah. the like fuzzier, like HM2 sounding parts on the record. But uh, yeah, I, I used to use the Maxon that Isaac is using, the yeah. OD, like the Super Tube one, but I just started using the Grid Slammer again. And just like the compliment that Mesa had, and yeah. it sounds really good. I love it. It's just yeah. super like precise overdrive. It's awesome. Yeah, I dig those. Yeah. And then what are you using the, using the Morley for? Um, just I don't, I don't use this as much, just for like effects on little parts. I just kind of have that on my board for like other stuff that I do at home. I, instead of just like taking it off on, when I come on tour with that's that But I use it for like a couple just like weird like effect things. Yeah, yeah. Make it kind of weird. Make something sound cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then I'm running a flanger, super coarse, and a reverb through the effects loop. And uh, we, we just started like messing around with Flange on the new record. I was actually inspired by a Cherry Isaac Toad from Morbid Angel because like I love how like on like a, a lot of trim pick stuff and like Morbid Angel like a, like a lot of times live he'll like throw the flanger on like, yeah, it's one, just one of the sides. Yeah. It's just like really cool like whenever you're like trim picking it out and yeah and then we started experimenting with that on the new record so. It actually stokes like, me really out to hear cool. like newer bands like you guys, yeah. especially hardcore bands, exper experimenting with modulation effects because it yeah. was in the 90s it was a big deal and then it was like nobody yeah. in like the 2000s used any kind of flange right. or chorus at all yeah. but it's such a cool tone man yeah, yeah. i love it yeah. I, I love like different effects and just making stuff like weird and like messing around with stuff and yeah we use the chorus a lot for like a lot of like washy like green out stuff sure then i use the reverb a lot but there's like a i do like way more leads on the new record like some like slayer type stuff so i throw the reverb on for that then i have the the altoids can of course to hold hold the picks the pick can yeah, yeah. That, that works yeah and that also works. if i need like a minute during while we're playing but yeah <laughs> no it's good it's just picks in there well hell yeah man yeah pretty pretty simple setup but it yeah, sounds pretty much monstrous yeah yeah it sounds real damn good yeah, man. well thanks so much for taking the time yeah, to talk of course, to us yeah, yeah thank i really, you. really appreciate it man yeah. yeah yeah all right now last but not least we're here with kevin otten mr otten i appreciate you taking the time to do thank this. you rules thank this you rules. for doing it Man, all right, let's start with these these bases. These are beautiful. Yeah, so this is my number one, my, my baby. It's a Ibanez BTB. Um, it's the, I think the premium? Yeah, premium yeah, at 1805E, whatever they want to put in it. 35-inch um, scale. It's got Bartolini's in it. When it, They sent it to me. Thank you to Ibanez. Uh, they sent Aguilar pickups, and I wasn't like a, a huge fan of it. They were just kind of like two mid, like just crunch mid sound. But uh, I've always been a big fan of Bartolini's because they're just super low end, they're punchy, bassy, yeah. uh, punchy, clean, uh, standard Ibanez, like EQ, everything, uh, EQ on, off, and like mids, now, all that. In so. the set, are you screwing around with your EQ too, a lot or just kind of no, set it? No, it? this volume all the way up, everything else complete. These are down. And I just, I just go. Yeah, <laughs> that is a beautiful hunk of wood, my dude. Yeah, it's, I mean, and it's like, it's super bougie looking because it's got like the gold hardware yeah, and yeah, like yeah. dark wood. It almost wood. looks like a funk player would play it or yeah. something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, like it doesn't fit me at all because I'm like black everything. <laughs> so it's like my like alternate personality bougie would play this. So it's like, that's, that's kind of <laughs> why I do it. <laughs> oh, that rules. What else we got in here? What is this bad boy? So I just got this bass. Uh, Right before we did the heavy Montreal fest uh -huh. with like Slayer in them, it's uh, oh, Ibanez cool. ATK, and I've been I've never seen one of these. I've been looking for one of these for so long. When wh wh like what era is it from? I think it's a newer one because I know the older ones don't have the oh, neck pickup. pickup. Oh weird! It's just the the bridge, 
Which now that's a honking freaking pickup. Yeah, I've never seen these are cat pickups. I've never seen that in my life. Um, but yeah, Ibanez used to make these and then they stopped this year. And uh, this was a year that we got like a re-up on like orders and stuff. And I was like, yo, ATK, please. I want one so bad. And our guy was like, done and don't make them. So I had to buy this. I don't care. I wanted it so bad. Um, it's so funny how stratty it looks in yeah. a way. Like, but that wood pick art is just so It's so cool. Like, cool. And this is like my favorite, just like the natural finish totally. on everything. Plus they breathe. I feel like it really breathes better. Like if yeah. uh, without any kind of lacquer, it, it's, there's so much resonance, you know? And uh, like, I don't know, it's a, it's a bolt on. This one is a neck through. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't mention, but. Uh, oh, that belly scoop is really nice too. Mm -hmm. Every like. It doesn't, I could do this all day, don't, right. don't feel anything. What was it about this guitar that made you like want to seek it out? I think the, the body shape, just like the standard like C, kind of like a Fender. Yeah, it looks like, stra like a Strat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the color, the natural. Um, Look at this bridge plate. I know. Holy shit, <laughs> you could skate that. It's a little, <laughs> it's a little dirty. I played it at our, at our release show at home, but uh, just, I just like it. I'm like drawn to it. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a, a different kind of headstock too for Ibanez, I feel like. Yeah. I don't know, that doesn't look too familiar to me, but that's cool. It's I, it's almost reminiscent of like the, the, the RG series and stuff like that, the Prestige oh, and stuff like that. A little bit. And it's like, fatter. The only thing I wish I would change about it was all the tuning pegs on one side. Uh, yeah. But I mean, I don't care. I looked yeah. over it. Um, Are you switching between these two quite often or is it just- I've been playing this one a little bit more just cause I got it. Yeah. And I what like- What does this pickup sound like? It's super just like, overdrive like to the max it, it handles overdrive super well and like this one does too but this one is more of like a clean totally kind of sound and this Not one is just typically like a precision almost like a jazz because exactly like which like fits with us and then so does this one so like yeah, i can cool. i can go either way with it but <laughs> it looks like a giant wooden strat it's yeah. so cool, and dude. it's it's super light i don't know if you want to oh yeah sure oh wow that doesn't win nothing yeah super easy to i did play, not expect super that light. Yeah, I figured that was gonna be a honker, like a, yeah. at least heavy. I'm glad it isn't, because I was just yeah, yeah. <laughs> this all, all the time. But 34 inch scale, um, yeah, bolt on, cool. super, super sick. And you guys are tuning to A standard, I think. A standard I for the new you. record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what gauges are you running? I forgot to ask the other guys. These are 135 Ernie balls. Cool. So I think 135, 110, so, yeah, I can't remember. Uh, I'm not very uh, versed on bass strings. I'm <laughs> yeah. a guitar player, but um, you guys obviously are playing some sweaty ass shows. Yeah. Are you having to change those strings quite a bit, or every two shows? Every I two shows. Them. Wow. Yeah. So I didn't change them on this one because I knew that this one had fresh strings. Gotcha, gotcha. But tomorrow, I'm just kind of like rotating it now. That's actually a good reason to have a backup bass if yeah. you're having to change that often. And yeah. it's because we don't switch bases or like guitars or anything through. The Unless set. You break a string or something? Yeah. I mean, obviously you're not going to unbase, but like. I have before. No shit. But it was a while ago. <laughs> but uh, luckily I haven't now. But yeah, so just like every every other show, I'll switch bases or something. So right, right. Makes super sense. easy. Cool. Let's take a let's take a uh, a dive into the Zampeg over here. Which yeah. Is SVT Classic can't go wrong. Dude, uh, obviously. It does the damn thing. Not fun to move. Yeah. No. God no. <laughs> Eighty something pounds, I think. Oh. All right. Um, but nothing does that thing, man. It, it does a thing. How long have you had that bad boy? I just got this uh, before this little run. I've had one before, and it just completely shit out on me. Um, and it would have been like as much to repair it as to buy like a new used one. So I just went and did that instead. It. Yeah. Um, it's a little beat up, which I like. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like things to well, look like. Well, it's not like, like it's not going to get beat up on the road. Exactly. Yeah. Like, luckily I have a case for it, but I like things to look like they get used. Totally. I don't like it to look super pristine. Um, I don't know, there's not much you can say about it that's not already said right. from it. You know what I mean? Like People know it. Yeah. People love it. It is what it is. For exactly. Sure. It's it's just a monster. Totally. And then um, this Mesa cab, is this an 810? Uh, 810, yeah. Cool. Four ohms. Um, I run two of these on bigger shows but for oh, yeah. these we just brought like one they'll run like two guitar cabs each i run sure. two bases or bass cabs yeah two of those would 
you feel it in your balls. Yeah. For sure, man. And that's another thing, thing, a sick thing about this is I can run at two ohms. Both calves, super easy. Right. Um, bitch to, to lug around. But yeah, but. Anything for the tone. It's worth it for the tone, <laughs> for sure, yeah. All right, cool. And, you know, unlike a lot of bass players and hardcore bands, you got some pedals going on. What do we got? I, I do. love the freeze. Um, yeah. Uh, you I've, guys all have that. Well, Isaac got us, me and Cole, into it just for the whole tuning aspect. Totally. Because we're in two yeah. different tunings. Um, but yeah, so this is the main bad boy, the B7K Ultra Dark Glass. Yeah, Dark Glass Electronics, those things are sweet. Uh, yeah, all three of them are Dark Glass, so shout out to Dark Glass. Um, I just got the little guy. What is the little guy? It's a Microtube X. It's the little brother of... Oh, so without the EQ? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so why two? Why are you running two? So I run these two on the same loop, um, and it's just like just blend them together, everything like that. And then the X7 is a parallel out run. So it's just going to front of house. So you're just giving a signal to front yeah. of house. Okay, gotcha. So the X7 is my front of house tone. And then these two are my on stage tone. Gotcha. So they don't affect each other in any way. Like I, I would be dumb if I did, but if we were playing and I turned this off, it wouldn't affect this at all. So, and then vice versa. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, all right, hit me with the jam, man. What are you using that for? Samples? Oh, yeah, these are <laughs> these are 808s. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, ah, that's how you're doing that. Mm, okay, okay. Yeah, our yeah. drummer, Paxson, was doing it with like a the rolling trigger? pad yeah. or whatever, uh, and it broke, I think, like earlier this year. And the, one of the bands we were on tour with used one of them for bass drops, uh -huh. and I was like, can I try it out? Because <laughs> I want to do it. Yeah. I feel cool doing it. And eventually everyone was just like, yeah, just do yeah. the bass drops. And I was like, okay. Don't make a breakdown hit you in the face. Exactly. So I, I'm in charge of it. I can do them whenever I want. Yeah. <laughs> so. Which actually kind of makes sense for the, <laughs> the bass player to be doing the bass drops anyway. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah it yeah. has the same word in it. Yeah, <laughs> it does. <laughs> and then, um, of course, like decimator. Got to. You guys are playing I, so goddamn loud. You have yeah, to have. If I turn that thing off during our set, I just like, I sound like a fucking broken TV just. Yeah. Um, Boss Tuner, of course. Tried and true. And then uh, the Shure GLX D4 is my wireless. Super, super sick, super reliable. Gotta be um, good for a band like yours too, because you guys are moving. Yeah, like, we're yeah. like constantly moving. Just Kids like, are jumping off stage and stuff. You don't want somebody to trip exactly. on the cable and rip your, yeah. Yeah, and I've like definitely got caught in cables before and it's just the whole like trying to shake your leg and you just look like an idiot on stage. Um, yeah, super sick, super easy to use. Nothing's really gone wrong with it. I get like a couple of times where it like unlinks itself and I just, I can just bend down and hold it. Done. Like Problem solved. Nothing to it. Cool. It's great. I love it. Well, Kevin, I really appreciate you guys taking the time course, to do yeah. this. Thank this you. It's been great. This is Perry with Premier Guitar. Stay tuned for other rig rundowns, riff rundowns. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube because it's awesome and there's great content. See you guys later.